Hello, it's Jay here again and welcome to another tutorial. So, in this lesson, we're going to pick up exactly where we left off in the last video. And in the last video, one of the things we did was to create a new void, wait for animations. And we're going to begin by filling out this function. So we'll begin by saying for open and close brackets, come inside those brackets, we're going to create of type int, we'll give it a name of PA and we'll say equals zero semicolon PA less than player attack anim and the length and semicolon so the length just refers to how many animations we actually have in the array so let's come back down and then we're going to say a plus sorry pa plus plus so then we just increase the int value based on the length so let's open and close brackets let's get that into the comments we'll say creates an int in brackets so i'll just put number for animations and gets the length based on how many animations we have and then we'll come inside this new set of brackets and then we're going to say if open and close brackets come inside and we're going to say in fact did we actually let's have a look We are actually, let's come back up to the void start. So yeah, so we did give it a naming convention of player one anim. So let's just come into there. So if inside the brackets underscore player one anim. And what we're going to do is we're going to say dot is playing. So you want the one with the capital I at the front. Very important. Again, otherwise this will not work. Inside we'll say underscore and we want the player attack anim. We'll open and close the square type of brackets. We'll come inside, we'll say PA for player animations. And then we want to come here after the closed square type of brackets, but before the other two closed brackets, we're going to say dot name. So let's get this into the comments. So we'll say if an attack animation is playing, we'll come to the next line and we'll just return our usual comment then do nothing and return otherwise and I'm going to come here between these two close brackets and let's just copy one of the player state lines of code and this one's ideal because that's what we need to set to the back to the idle state and that is that function done now. So let me think. I think I'm going to create it separately here. So let's come here, private void. And we'll create of type attack import manager. Open and close brackets, open and close. So let's copy in the debug log and switch out the naming convention as normal. 
and we'll come inside this function. So what we're going to do is create a series of if statements. So if open and close brackets, inside the brackets we're going to say import dot and what we want is get button down. We'll open and close brackets, come inside, little speech marks and we're going to say fire one. So let's put that into the comments. If input is equal to fire one, and we'll come to the line below. So if we are, or if the input is equal to that, let's actually change state. So again, let's copy one of these lines. Player state, and we want to change this. And think what we have called it. Let's come back up. So let's have a look here. And we'll probably need to actually create these in the the finite state machine here. So let's have a look. And In fact, I'm going to put it here between those two. So let's say, and let's have a look at the animation list. So we've got high, low, high, low for both punch and kick. So we'll say player high punch, comma, player low punch. Player high kick, and finally, player low kick. So, with that in place, let's come to the finite state machine and we'll just copy and paste the wait for animations in four times all three lines of that particular block and we'll just change what needs to be changed so and we want low punch here and don't worry we are going to get some errors until we've got everything in place and once we have, those should all disappear. So that's those in place. Let's have a look. We'll come down. So we've got the animations in place. And we actually got these in place, these voids. I'm going to change them. I'm just going to put player at the beginning of each and every one of them and I should put it in the debug log as well so I'll go ahead and do that as well now that's in place we can come back to the attack input manager and we'll say player high punch and that should fix everything. So let's copy and paste that into the comments. And let's have a look. All errors should be fixed now. So I'll just save that off. And we've got no red errors. So that's fantastic. And let's come back to the attack input manager. Let's copy and paste that three times, and I'm sure you've already guessing what's going to happen here. We're going to change that to fire two. And we'll keep going. Let's change all these at once. So fire three. 
and fire four. So let's have a look. In fact, fire one, if I remember right, when tested, I think this was assigned to the play at low kick, but we'll we'll go through this because we'll get it all set up. And I think that was the player high kick. Because I do test out some of this code just before filming on another PC. So I'm just trying to remember which order these come in. So we want... And... We'll put this high punch. And this as low punch. I may have to change these two around. I'm not entirely positive. But that's fine. Because once we actually come to test this script out. We'll probably need to do quite a bit of tweaking. Although we are actually coming to the point where we've nearly finished the basics of this script and I'm going to emphasize the word basics because I will come back and add to this script at a later date you know to add things like special moves and other things that you may wish in your fighting game but this is just so we can actually get the player moving left right up down and actually be able to attack and then we'll worry about adding more functionality as we go on so we'll set this up as the attack input manager open and close close that line off and i'm putting it in the void update and i'm putting it above these other if blocks where we actually get the input from the controller because if we press the attack button I want that to override any of these so I'm going to put it above those it's also the one of the reasons why I just moved it out to a separate function and I, as again I may move these out to a separate function just to make the script a little bit more uniformed and tidy but we are actually getting to the point of completion. We still need to add the horizontal input, but that should be fairly simple. And then we'll begin to test this script out, which I think we'll do in the next lesson now. So, as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope to see you next time. And until then, as always, bye for now.